Hey there, fools. Big T here, and I'm back with another video. Uh, this video will be about Shinmu 3, the recent trailer and reaction from a real Shinmu fan. It's kind of a rant, and it will be, uh, it will probably uh, piss off some people, but oh well. This is something I've been kind of holding in uh, for a while uh, since the trailer was revealed. And actually, since, you know, the, the Shinmu itself was even. Uh, Shinmu 3 itself was even mentioned or became a thing on that E3 stage. Um, I never liked the way that it was rolled out to begin with. Because we're talking about Yu Suzuki here. Um, next to Miyamoto, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, one of the greatest video game designers of all time. Um, sh should be well respected throughout the industry. Um, and I just didn't... I never liked how... Um, and I've said back then how I felt Sony dragged this dude out the legend out onto an E3 stage and asked him to beg for money and to me that is just despicable could you imagine in 10 years or whatever uh, you know somebody dragging out Miyamoto uh, so he can beg for money to make a new Mario game like you know to me yeah. It's it's on that level. Um, obviously, I see Miyamoto and his games just a step above Sega, but Sega to me um, are right there on the Nintendo as far as uh, their legacy and uh, their great games that they make. So I just never liked that look. That was a bad look to me. And I was, if you were watching me as I was watching that, you could see that I was visibly upset that. Sony, a company that could have easily funded this game themselves and, you know, made it made it a exclusive game to their platform. You know, uh, if they really cared about this series, I just felt like this was a uh, a goodwill move, a fan move to get goodwill on their side. And if they really uh, cared about Shinmu, they would have just funded the game themselves and they didn't do that. So I, I didn't like it from the beginning. Like I obviously I love the fact that we were getting Shinmu, and it looks like they're going to be closing the story with this one. To the right. And okay, we never thanks. got that. We never got that closure, um, which is sad. But I just, I hate it uh, how it was done. Okay. And I think they made $6 million or something like that. And Sony's going to be partially funding it. I don't know what it is. Like, I really don't. I'm really confused by all that, which is another thing that bothers me. It should be easy to find out these things and it should be well known what the circumstances are and uh i at least to me i haven't seen that okay so you have that but i was still happy at the end of the day that we're getting a shinmu and then we have this you know uh, well let me go back to that because they showed some footage during that and people were you know super excited oh my god look it's looking good blah 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 and a lot of these people didn't seem to realize that that was footage basically from Shinmu, uh, the original title. Um, and they just kind of did some graphical bumps in it to kind of give you an idea of what it would look like. So a lot of people was, was thinking that stuff was Shinmu 3. And that is, the, is part of what I want to talk about, the fraudulence around uh, the Shinmu, all of a sudden Shinmu fandom. Um, because we all know that Shinmu came out on Dreamcast, the original one. Uh, and it didn't sell that great. I mean, it it broke a million copies. I don't know, I don't know at what cost or what um, the price point was when it got over that hump. But that was not nearly enough, uh, uh, you know, because of the budget of the game, which was reportedly around fifty million dollars or so. Because it started on Sega Saturn and it moved over to Sega Dreamcast, and I'm sure that um, bumped up the budget. But it was also a very ambitious title, and um, that is what I want to get into now. Um, and I'll get back to the fraudulence of the fandom, apparently. Uh, the things that were great about Shinmu, that was, especially for its time, when it came out in 2000, uh, there weren't a lot of games that were really doing this, and definitely not to this scale. The greatest things about Shinmu were the visuals, which were excellent for the time. Um, the open world nature obviously wasn't as big of an open world. It was kind of compact, and you had to kind of uh, open up the world as you went along and doing tasks and whatnot and the story and also the music the music was also a huge part I, I still hum that main theme to this day 
Um, it is just a beautiful, it just, the whole game has beautiful music in it. Um, but that main theme, man, it, that orchestrated beautiful main theme is just, it's amazing. It is the stuff of um, Hollywood, which was at that time was still a, you know, a, a far off thing for video games. Um, reaching that kind of a budget, reaching that kind of a impact level. And the the music was amazing. And the first thing, obviously, is the story. And Shinmu is, uh, <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say, one of the first games that I actually shed real tears for. Uh, playing through it and, you know, the heartbreaking na nature of it. Um, this is not really a spoiler. Uh, basically, uh, Ryu... Um, who's the main character that you play his father gets killed uh, pr you know basically the opening act of the game you're basically on a revenge uh, story to find out and to find to go get Lon D who is the guy who killed him and to figure out what's the mystery around these mirrors and all that stuff and that's where your adventure starts you just kind of this uh, kind of like naive kid you know um, who's thrusted into this seedy world of crime uh crime syndicates and all kinds of stuff it's a really good storytelling really good game the only even back then the only problems with the game that i saw were the controls um it it the controls in shinmu are not quite tank controls um but it's very deep pad controls which is so weird because the dreamcast had um an analog stick um but the sake of saturn didn't so maybe that was part of the reason why um well the at least the original sega saturn controller it came out with a 3d controller later but the original sega saturn controller had a d-pad only and maybe you know like i said because it came from sega saturn over to the dreamcast they never really rectified those controls so uh ryu's movement is really stiff um, and that may also have to do with the fact that is it there's a virtual fighting a virtual fighter fighting engine in it and to play virtual fighter you um you use a d-pad that's how even though it's a 3d fighter you play that game with a d-pad it's, it's very technical in that way and uh Shinmu actually started off as uh, uh rpg based in the virtual fighter world using um God, i can't think of his name right uh, uh what's the uh, uh kira using a kira so Ryu was actually Akira um, from Virtual Fighter, and uh, they changed it to Ryu and changed the story of um, the aspects of the game. But the, you know, so like I said, the, the the controls were always kind of archaic, um, even on the Dreamcast and the subsequent sequel on the Sega or Sega <laughs> on the uh, Xbox. That was always a problem with the game. So, but you know, I fought through that stuff. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. You could definitely feel it when playing the game. Uh, it almost had like a Laura Croft, the original Laura Croft Tomb Raider kind of movements uh, where you push forward and your character steps, you know, it's kind of late response and he kind of slowly turns, <laughs> you know, like a slowly pivots, you know, to turn around and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I love the game regardless. I thought the fighting mechanics in it were great and uh, the story was great. The music was great. All that stuff was great. And so I'm a huge fan of this game. I shed tears <laughs> for the story of this game. And so when we see this trailer, after you know all these other games have come out that are that have used uh, the the idea of what Shinmu is, the big open world and the the gun mechanic, the gun or well, this gunplay, and not in Shinmu. Um, uh, but in other games, they start you know they use gunplay as well as like you know hand to hand combat and stuff like that, like. The Yakuza series. Um, you can talk about like true crime. Even you can talk about obviously Grand Theft Auto, and um, uh, Sleeping Dogs. Um, these games all feel similar to Shinmu, and so sh you would hope that Shinmu's um, and, you know controls at least would improve. Like if you're looking at this trailer, it's like the animation is not very good. I mean, they you know they came out with an excuse for why the facial animations weren't what they you know want or weren't final or whatnot but i'm like this is shinmu don't show that shit unless 
it's, you know, in a state where it's showable. The, the actual visuals of the game aren't that great either. I mean, the visual style of it, I don't like. The visuals are fine. I mean, they look somewhat close to update, up to date, which is fine. I mean, I'm not some gra kind of graphics or anything, but I just think that it, it visually looks uninspiring. You know, um, there's nothing snappy about the art style, the visual style of it. You know, I'm, and then because they made that excuse about the the facial animations, I'm not going to get into that. But I just think the the movement animations of the characters is not is sub 2005. Like that is utterly ridiculous. And so when I complain about these things, and other people like me complain about these things, especially me because I am a true fan of Shinmu, it's coming from the heart. It's not the to dis you know. To diss the game, I love the game. I love the series. Somebody, I was in Juices Loose podcast. Somebody made a comment. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying it's because it's not on Switch. Uh, which, <laughs> which Shinmu game was on a Nintendo console? Yeah, none. And I still love them. So that is the stupidest. It's, it's always the excuses when people try to point out an issue with something. It's not just this. It happens with a lot of stuff, but. When you try to point out an issue with something, people try to undermine your, you know, your credibility, you know, instead of you, facing Ryan. the actual Goodbye. argument you're trying to make. Well, yeah, you're right. That doesn't look good. Or yeah, you, no, they won't say that. They'll say, well, you're just a fanboy. This or like, excuse me, I bought the Dreamcast Sega console, um, and I played Shinmu on that. And then uh, one of the big reasons I bought a, a Xbox original. Um, OG Xbox was because of all the Sega games on it, including Shinmu 2. I didn't have a PAL. If you, if you, unless you had a PAL region or a J Japanese uh, Dreamcast, you didn't get Shinmu 2. And so that was the only way to get it was on an original Xbox. And that was a big reason for me buying the original Xbox. So I'm a fan of Shinmu in the series. Uh, I'm a bigger fan than a lot of these frauds that come out. And oh yeah, they went all buck wild and crazy. And uh, where were these dudes when the game came out? The original game came out, or the sequel? Because the game didn't sell that well. But all of a sudden, there's all these people coming out of the woodworks that love Shinmu. You know, obviously, Shinmu could have uh, gathered uh, a following afterwards, and I'm sure that happened to some degree. But all these people acting like, oh, this is like you know, uh, some major series that they always cared about and adored. When, you know, the sales didn't bear that out. And people, I don't see that many people. There's there's a strong community of uh, Shinmu uh, and just Sega fans that are even on YouTube um, that uh, actually follow me. I did a video about Shinmu, uh, the, Sega, the Sega Saturn to the Sega Dreamcast stuff. And um, it was shared by some, uh, some Sega communities and some Shinmu communities, which was very cool. But, um... I just feel like there's a lot of fraudulence around this. You know, I felt that way around the, the Final Fantasy VII stuff. But Final Fantasy VII did sell really well. It was a big game, but I just felt like a lot of these people who were, oh my God, excited about it, probably never even played it or never beat it, you know. And I just feel like that's the case with Shinmu as well. Um, but just know, when I, when I uh, have an issue, I have a problem, especially when it comes to games that I adore series that I adore like Shinmu it's legit it's not about some stupid fanboy bullcrap because like I said I played I never played Shinmu on a Nintendo console so that's the stupidest argument of all time but uh, anyway yeah they need to if they're gonna show the game wait till it's in a way better state this is a storied franchise like I said um, I that I adore and if you're going to put some stuff out, wait till you got some stuff that's better. You know people are going to react, especially in this era um, of social media, that people are going to react and share this stuff. And there's going to be there's going to be some fake anger and fake outrage and uh, complaining. But there's going to be a lot of real uh, anger and uh, outrage um, that I have. And people like me who actually do play these games, who actually beat these games multiple times. I probably beat uh, Shinmu 1 and 2. Um at least you know 12 13 times because i would i used to play it like Hello, yearly um i just love this Can series i, I love the characters in the game uh, i love the world i love the the kind of detective nature of it yes, where 
Ryu's just kind of going around, and I even love the weird quirks, like the the weird dialogue. There's a lot of weird dialogue in the game. It has to do with translations, probably, that weren't very good. But that to me, that's all part of Shinmu. And uh, yeah, so when I when I when I say something. Um, "Quote unquote negative about the game is it's coming from the heart. It's coming from uh, the love of the game, and that, that I want it to be great. You know, some people are just like, oh, I just want the story to close. I mean, talk about low ass standards. Like, if you just care about the damn story of the game, you should have um, did a uh, what do you call it, a Kickstarter or, or um, sign a petition, start a petition to have." Shinmu would come out as a fucking comic book because <laughs> you could have got your story closed through that. This is a game, and in this era, it needs to be better. At least it needs to be up to the standards of this era. It doesn't have to be overly crazy. Like that was that's what Shinmu was about: great visuals and music and all that stuff back then. It doesn't have to be about that now, but it has to be, you know, at least a standard-looking game in 2017. Uh, 2016, you, you know, it had to be within the last couple of years. So, anyway, that's my rant on Shinmu. Um, I hope, I don't believe the game's gonna turn out that great, but I hope it does. I really do. Um, I'm probably gonna buy it regardless of what state it is, because I also want to finish the story, but I would like to finish the story on a high note, not a low one. So, because I'm a real fan. And, uh, yeah, that's it for my rant. Thanks again for watching and listening, fools, and I'll see you next time. Peace out. Eight in the morning. Don't forget. Eight o'clock. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Play Nintendo, fools. Do, 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 do.